By the time this video goes up, it'll probably only be a few hours until we leave for our fancy cruise holiday. So in today's special edition crafters log, let's take a look at how I've got on with my goal this year of making a me made wardrobe cruise witch edition. Just very quickly though, before we jump into that, I need to say a really big thank you because I was freaking out about last week's monthly memberships announcement and honestly, it looks like I needn't have worried. I already have some signups, way more than I ever expected in the first week, and a couple of you, you know who you are, have gone way above and beyond. <laughs> there was also definitely a majority of people in favour of setting up a Discord server, so watch out for more details on that later in August once we get back from this holiday and get settled back into our routines. Thank you very much for not cancelling me in my attempt to afford some semblance of a social life. Okay, no further ado, engage cruise mode. Amusingly enough, in recording this video, I've learned that I've made way more stuff than I could possibly take and wear on a week-long holiday. So some of this probably won't end up coming with us, but it's just really satisfying seeing how much stuff I've made over the last few years. First up then, my beloved cactus dress. The first bit of clothing I ever properly sewed from an actual pattern instead of making it up as I went. I love this dress so much. I wear it pretty much constantly in summer, so it was a no-brainer for a cruise situation. Honestly, it is a bit weird I don't have more photos of this, but the one of me craft goblining around on the floor to make it is still one of my most liked Instagram posts to date. <laughs> It is comfy, I can loosen or tighten the belt to suit, and of course, it's got pockets. I was incredibly proud of how neat this hem is at the time, and looking at it now, yeah, well done past me, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Bonus points go to this dress as well, because I had enough fabric left over to make a matching project bag, which is always fun. And also, I happen to think it looks great with my scruffy old mustard yellow crochet cardigan, which I also love to wear all the time. Don't argue with me on that last one. It's pointless. I won't listen. I did plan to make a new maxi dress, but that didn't quite go to plan. More about that in a moment. So the only other me made dress I'm packing is this basic navy kimono dress that I made in a rushed and stressful day and a half for So Frugal last March. Dave had COVID, I was living in the craft room, everything was a stressful mess. This dress turned out to be a bit too big and terribly unflattering if I'm honest, but I'm packing it because I think it's the perfect cover up for on the pool deck. The Patty Pocket Skirt. Victim of my first ever attempt at a proper project vlog and a failed experiment in lavalier mics. But a very successful skirt. It fits. It has giant pockets. Like, seriously giant. It's black and white, so it goes with everything. And it's covered in gurning monkeys. I mean, literally, what more can you ask from a garment? Nothing, that's what. I love how the pattern almost looks like it's roses or something from a distance, and then you get up close and it's like, oh. <laughs> I love that it goes with so many different tops, both me made and otherwise, which you'll see in a minute. In fact, the only thing I'm not happy with on this skirt is the waistband. I stuck to the pattern and I cut the band straight, so it doesn't really fit my somewhat curvier figure. But also there's like weird folds where I think I tried to fit too much skirt into not enough band. I don't know, it was a long time ago and I was just learning. Doesn't matter though, the amazing monkey fabric hides all manner of sins. I cannot describe to you how much I love this ridiculous skirt. One of my other craft goals for 2023 was to thrift more fabrics, and you might have seen me picking up the odd bedsheet or two from charity shops over the last few months. One of them was this perfect purple colour. It's a cotton poly blend, but extremely super soft and drapey. Sadly, only a single sheet, so I couldn't really make a whole maxi dress like I'd wanted, but I decided to go for a basic tiered maxi skirt instead. This was easy peasy. Pulled up a tutorial on what multipliers were needed for the tiers, and the length of the sheet ended up being just slightly too short to get the 2.7 times waist measurement recommended. But I slapped them together with some very inexpert gathering and some accidentally caught bits and pieces here and there, and honestly, nothing even bothered me enough to redo it. I had considered putting a real waistband on this and an invisible zipper in the back, but I just decided to go with elastic in the end. It is a bit of a shame, because look at this great colour match I got with the zipper I ordered off eBay. Definitely more than could be said for the closest thread I own. And speaking of elastic, this was a fitted sheet, so free elastic ahoy! Unfortunately, it turned out to be firmly sewn in, so I had to ask myself, is 50 pence worth of elastic really worth sitting there doing all of that seam ripping? Two hours later. 
I'm also taking my Winslow pants that you might remember I made last summer as a crossover sewing challenge with Katie Make Stuff. They are so big, so lightweight, and again, go with absolutely everything. They probably look really plain on camera, but if you look closely, the fabric has this subtle dobby texture that I really love. I had to do a couple of quick fixes on these last weekend because, frankly, when I made them last year, this room was so hot I could barely think. Never mind be patient and take my time reinforcing seams. But it's all good now. The downside of these pants is that they are extremely creasable and basically look a mess as soon as I put them on. But never fear, we are packing decreasing spray, which it turns out works a treat on viscose. One other thing I'd nabbed on a recent charity shop run was this green bedding set for 50 pence. Seriously, 50 pence. I then negated such an awesome surfing by spending about 15 quid on two new sewing patterns that I'd been influenced to buy from a Mastodon post, and therefore it's totally not my fault. There were the Cali skirt, a high-waisted gathered affair, and Ellie bralette, which is... a bralette. I did originally start cutting bits out for the skirt way back in May, but I got distracted as per, so it wasn't completed until much more recently. For the skirt, I added pockets that weren't originally in the pattern, and I also drafted a custom curved waistband because I learned my lesson about how unsuitable straight bands are from the previously mentioned monkey skirt. So I drafted a new curved one and it fit like a glove and I am so proud, so proud. The matching bralette is reversible. I used the plain green from the other side of the quilt cover for the lining. And in the original, the straps aren't reversible, so they contrast with one side, but I was feeling fancy, so I made those reversible too. And then went through a minor round of backtracking when I accidentally sewed them on the wrong way around, but we won't talk about that. You'll see in a second, but I think in hindsight, I probably should have either made this band narrower or also made it curved because it does sort of fold and sit weirdly on me. But it's a casual tie-back bralette top, it really doesn't matter. What does matter is that I remember not to bend over while wearing it in front of Dave's family. <laughs> I think the only other standalone me made top I'm taking is this purple Carla tee. I knitted this over the summer of 2021, so my first few ever Crafters Log videos featured me working on this, and now I wear it all the time and I love it to bits. Jeans, shorts, skirts, does not matter, I feel like I can't go wrong with this thing, it looks good with everything. And even though it's made of sock yarn with mostly merino content, I do find it's very breathable and comfy to wear in the heat, so it's all good there. Doesn't crease either, that is a huge bonus in terms of cruise wear. There were a couple of other tops I considered taking, namely this clam top and my old carry bikini top. But to be honest, I don't see them getting worn this time round. I don't know, we'll see if there's enough room in the suitcase for these once everything else is in. Last but not least, I got the idea that I needed some kind of lacy black crochet layering piece. So I looked at some patterns, I bought some yarn, and I made two. First is the boat neck top with kimono drop sleeve, which I really do wish had a shorter name because I love bigging this pattern up, it is my favourite thing ever. The original is a long tunic style, but I decided to leave off a row of motifs at the bottom and only block it quite lightly in the length direction, so here we have a modified cropped rendition. Satisfying before and after blocking picks, because who doesn't love looking at those? The other project was my Cosmos blouse, which is a free pattern and looked really quick to whip up. It wasn't as quick as I'd hoped in the end, and honestly it's also not as open as I hoped it would be. So now I'm really glad I made two cropped crochet tops, because I can wear the last one when it's really hot, and throw this one on if we're sitting indoors in the air conditioning, or if the wind gets up on deck at night or something. Crochet crop tops for all weathers. <laughs> so I think that's everything me made I'm taking. Obviously I am taking other clothes, I have some generic vest tops, some navy blue dungarees, my everyday jeans, but also this pair of high-waisted denim shorts that I got for five pounds including postage off of Vinted. And can I just show you the most amazing feature here? The pockets are big enough to hold a whole phone without it falling out when I sit down. Amazing. I also nabbed this dress off Vinted as well, which I can't remember the price of it, but it was probably similar to the shorts. Honestly, you can get so much cool stuff on there and it feels way better to give pre-loved stuff a home than it does to buy brand new. So that's any fancy nights accounted for, and if there's more than one fancy night, well, everyone better get used to seeing me in this dress, cause it's all I've got. Now, I've talked your ear off about all of these projects, but it is finally time to see it all come together. Presenting my almost entirely me made, but if not at least second hand, Cruise Witch wardrobe. <laughs> Thank you.
am so excited. Sometimes you see these really prolific crafters who seem to churn out a seasonal wardrobe every season somehow, and I just think, how could I possibly keep up with that, you know? Truth is, I can't possibly keep up with that, but seeing all of this all together has proven to me that slow and steady is a totally viable way to do things. I think next I really want to get into sewing my own t-shirts so that I can boat neck all the things, but that is a future me problem. For now, I'm off to enjoy an overpriced mojito on a boat somewhere. So hopefully this has shown you that even chumps like myself can make believable looking clothes. Did you have a favourite? Do you have a me-made outfit that makes you feel amazing? Please share down in the comments because I for one love to be inspired and also keep my project queue unmanageably long. This video was supported by my enablers over at Kofi, but especially by the cool kids in the Stitch Squad, who this week are Stitching Liz, Marianne Johnson, Sunny, Laura Sellets, and Candy Riley Peddinger. Thank you so much to everybody for your support and I will see you when I get back for some more crafty nonsense. In the meantime though, have a brilliant rest of your day and keep making cool stuff. Bye!